So we're, we're learning about polar coordinates today, and we've got some points here in polar coordinates, which we have to convert to standard form, um, which means that the r should be positive, and the theta should be between 0 and 2 pi. And then we have to convert them to rectangular coordinates. So let me get started graphing this first point. We're given negative 13 pi over 6. Already I don't like that. I'm going to add 2 pi to that. And that gives me negative 13 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6 is negative pi over 6. I still don't like that. That's still not in standard range. So I'm going to add another 2 pi to that. And that gives me 11 pi over 6. So that's good. I'm going to graph that now. 11 pi over 6 is just short of 2 pi. It's over there, 11 pi over 6. But we're supposed to go negative 2 units in this direction. That means I want to end up in the opposite direction from 11 pi over 6. And maybe you can tell from the graph that that's 5 pi over 6. If you can't tell that immediately from the graph, just subtract pi from 11 pi over 6, and you'll get 5 pi over 6. And so the answer there is that we want to go 2 units, positive 2 units, in the direction of 5 pi over 6. And now I've got to find my rectangular coordinates. So my x, remember the master formulas we're using here, x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. So x is 2 cosine 2 pi over 6 which is 2 times negative root 3 over 2. That's one I've got memorized. Um, and it's negative because the x value is negative there. y is 2 sine of 2 pi over 6. Sorry, that's 5 pi over 6 on both of those. 5 pi over 6, which is 2 times positive 1 half because the y is positive. So my xy collectively, the rectangular coordinates, are negative root 3 and 1. Negative root 3 and 1. So that's the first point. The second one here, 6 negative pi over 3. Let me graph that one. Um, again, I think I'm going to add 2 pi to that right away to get it in the proper range. So add 2 pi to that. 2 pi minus pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. And so if I graph that, 5 pi over 3 is down here in the fourth quadrant. 5 pi over 3. And our radius is 6. So our standard form there is 6. 5 pi over 3. And now I'll find x and y using r cosine theta and r sine theta. So 6 times the cosine of 5 pi over 3, which is 6. Now the cosine of 5 pi over 3, it's positive because the x value is positive, is 1 half. And y is 6 sine of 5 pi over 3, negative because the y coordinate is negative, so 6 times negative root 3 over 2. These are common values that I have memorized. So the xy collectively can be written as those simplify down to 3 and negative square root of negative 3 square roots of 3. So the third one here is 7 pi over 4. Let me find that. This is number 3 now. That was number 2. Number 3, 7 pi over 4. That's all the way around in the fourth quadrant, just short of 2 pi. 7 pi over 4. But I want to go negative 5 units in that direction. So that takes me 5 units in the opposite direction. And I can tell from the graph that that's 3 pi over 4. But if you're concerned about working that out graphically, 
Just subtract pi from 7 pi over 4, and you get 3 pi over 4. And so our standard form of polar coordinates would be 5, 3 pi over 4. And now let me use that to find the x and y. x is r cosine theta. So that's 5 cosine of 3 pi over 4, which is 5 times negative square root of 2 over 2. Cosine is negative. And y is 5 sine of 3 pi over 4, which is 5 times, well, the sine there is positive, so 5 square roots of 2 over 2. And so the x and y collectively give you the coordinates negative 5 root 2 over 2 and 5 root 2 over 2. And finally, the fourth point here, we go negative 5 pi over 4. Already I don't like that. I'm going to negative 5 pi over 4. I'm going to add 2 pi to that right away and get 3 pi over 4. So I'm going to go in the 3 pi over 4 direction. There's 3 pi over 4. But I have to go negative 4 units in that direction. So that means I actually go in the opposite direction, 4 units. And to find that angle, I add pi. And that puts me down back at 7 pi over 4. So 7 pi over 4 is my reference angle. And I want to go 4 units in that direction. So my standard polar coordinates there are 4 and 7 pi over 4. Now my x and y I find using r cosine theta and r sine theta. x equals 4 cosine 7 pi over 4, which is 4. Now the cosine is positive because we're in the fourth quadrant. Um, so that's root 2 over 2. And y is 4 sine of 7 pi over 4, which is 4 times negative root 2 over 2. Negative because we're in the fourth quadrant. The y coordinate's negative. And so the x and y collectively are 2 root 2 and negative 2 root 2. So there's several, several steps involved in that problem. Um, we're given these polar coordinates, but they aren't necessarily in standard form, meaning the r might not be positive, and the theta might not be between 0 and 2 pi. So the first thing to do in all of these is to draw a graph, figure out where your angle is. Um, and if you don't like the angle, meaning if it's not between 0 and 2 pi, you can add or subtract multiples of 2 pi to get it in between 0 and 2 pi. So that's what we did with a lot of these, is we added and subtracted multiples of 2 pi to get the angle in between 0 and 2 pi. Then we plotted the radius. And for some of these, the radius turned out to be negative, which means we're actually walking in the opposite direction from the angle that we expected. And so for example, on this first one, we thought we were going down to 11 pi over 6. In fact, we were going in the opposite direction. And so to figure out what the opposite direction was, I subtracted pi, and that's how I got 5 pi over 6 is my answer. Uh, that happened on several of those. We ended up walking in the negative direction, and so we had to subtract pi or add pi to get our final answers for the reference angle. And once we add or subtract pi, we can make the radius positive. And so that's how we got the radius for each of these and a reference angle for each of these. Once we found a radius and a reference angle, it was a matter of using the standard component formulas, r cosine theta and r sine theta. In each case, we use x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Plug those in. These were all common values, so I knew the cosines and sines for all of them without looking them up on a calculator, because they were all multiples of pi over 3 and pi over 4. And then I was able to just write down 
the coordinates for x and y on all of those.